Hi there, uh, Dr. Julian Bollity here from the Australian Urban Design Research Centre delivering a lecture for the Fundamentals of Planning Unit. And today I'm going to present a proposal for a new urban model. Uh, it's called Refuge City. According to the experts, Australia is one of the most successful multicultural societies in the world. Nonetheless, in recent times, Australians have come to regard population growth, and particularly immigration, as a problem at best to be solved. In contrast, we believe that population growth and migration is a creative opportunity to shape new Australian cities unlike any we've built today. Today, I'm really glad to be able to launch for you our unique refuge city urban model. To present to you the problem of global population displacement and the potential of our model to offer a part solution. In a global economy where technology has triumphed over geography, Australians are naturally global citizens. However, all is not well in multicultural Australia. Recent and incredible polling indicates that 64% of Australians think the level of immigration over the past decade has been too high, up from 50% in 2016. We believe such opinions in part stem from entrenched migration patterns. Currently 90% of new arrivals city settle in Sydney or Melbourne, where they compound housing affordability and congestion issues, amongst others, along with other policies which do contribute to these uh, issues. Indeed. Migrants are the main contributors to both cities' populations growing by over 100,000 people each year. In response to these issues, the federal Morrison government is considering a plan requiring some new migrants, including refugees, to settle for up to five years in regional areas. However, there are limits to this approach. Residents of regional Australia are often resistant to increased migration overwhelming their own towns. Moreover, the mechanisation or automation of farming and mining means that jobs are often scarce. Australia will need more drastic solutions over the longer term. Refugees now number over 25 million people worldwide. Due to climate change alone, it is projected there'll be a deluge of refugees by 2050, particularly in the Asian region, 62 million in Bangladesh alone. As demographer Bernard Sold asks, in the face of such a deluge of refugees, what does Australia do? Turn every boat back? Leave the refugees without support on the Kimberley coast? Plan to help as many as we can and then hope we can ship back 10,000 tens of thousands and more. Clearly, Australia will need a plan to deal with the situation, particularly given the recent panic over the arrival of small numbers of boat people and the reactionary coalition government reducing migration to the lowest level in a decade. We could bemoan a lack of support for increased immigration in Australia or instead bear this resistance in mind and attempt to find a creative part solution. This is where our refuge city model is potentially instructive. As my fellow refuge city proponent, Ken Parrish urges, Australians are not so enthusiastic about sharing their good luck with refugees and migrants. A charter city administered by Australia will at least allow them access to the governmental and legal institutions which have served Australia so well. In line with this sentiment, we've designed an urban model for a new multicultural and entrepreneurial metropolis in this instance, located on Australia's northern coast, which can provide many migrants refuge and opportunity above and beyond what we already accept through our existing humanitarian and skilled migration programs. Why the north coast? We have selected this area because it has many, many advantages, such as proximity to rapidly growing Indonesia, availability of minerals and energy, and in the case of the Northern Territory, Commonwealth control of land. This is important because it gives the federal government full legislative power to create new cities unconstrained by opposition from state governments. In spatial terms, Refuge City will comprise dense, car phobic and adaptable urban neighbourhoods of up to 30,000 people. The number of refugees the Refugee Council of Australia believe we should settle annually. Currently, we settle about 5,000, that's a 2015 figure, UNHCR projected global resettlement needs. Australia currently accepts about 240,000 migrants per year, to put this in perspective. The design of these neighbourhoods will be based partly around migrant ethnicities, forming a city of cities rather than a monolithic mass of urbanism. As required, this form will enable different cultural groups to follow their own way of life and build up integral, almost self-sufficient societal cells. The design of these neighbourhoods will reference, within reason, the urban traditions of the residents' home countries and have been to provide a home away from home. Rather than the cultural model of the melting pot, which is under assault in many cities of the world, 
These urban neighbourhoods will cradle islands of cultural specificity, yet maintain an overall cultural diversity. Between these cells will be natural areas, recreational open spaces and schools, which will provide crucial shared spaces between the urban islands. Like other charter cities, such as Chensen, an independent government will govern the city, operating with respect to a specific charter. The autonomous government will incorporate an alliance of representatives from Australia's states and federal government and other countries within the Asia Pacific region and beyond. The charter's terms, which will define the city's operation, include a much lower personal and company tax regime than elsewhere in Australia, to stimulate investment and jobs, such as underwritten Shenzhen's success. Businesses will pay workers the Australian minimum wage, but will not otherwise be required to offer award wages or conditions. Complementing this will be a basic but livable social security, housing, education, and primary health care system. After being checked in on arrival, migrants will receive a temporary visa, but will be able to apply for skilled migration visa if they have marketable skills from the city's trade schools and university campuses, or a permanent business visa if they establish a successful business. Moreover, the city will avoid the need for mandatory offshore detention which the UN has condemned as a massive abuse of migrants, which in turn has profoundly damaged Australia's moral authority globally. Nonetheless, despite our tarnished reputation, Australian residents will be welcome in Refuge City, whether as students attending global university hubs, starting a business or enjoying the city's bustling diversity while on a weekend getaway. Through a leasehold model, Indigenous landholders will maintain ownership of all refuge city land forever and get gain a sustainable and substantial rental income from it. For once, city building will not occur at the expense of Australia's Indigenous people. You could be forgiven for thinking all of this is a bit fanciful. In response, however, I would say consider Sydney, a bustling global city of almost 5 million that began with convicts staggering out of reeking ships and having a drunken night on the shores of Farm Cove. From little things, big things grow. It doesn't grow easy though. Australian next Prime Minister, Gough Whitlam, explained in the 1970s, building cities is by far the most difficult, complex and majestic thing that people do. In this we come nearest in scale to what God does in creating the stars and the hills and the forests. Let us be merciful gods and usher in a new epoch for Australia's multicultural urbanisation, Manhattan of the North. Thanks for listening. Thanks to the students of ALA 2001 uh, who built these refuge city models and to the staff who delivered some beautiful work. And finally, my colleague, Ken Parrish, who has developed the constitutional dimensions of refuge city. Thank you. <laughs>